At this time, uh, Judy Bader, who is on the um, uh, program committee, will provide um, a, a welcome uh, for our annual meeting. Judy? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the NCRP 52nd Annual Meeting. We're so glad that you're here. And it's a pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the Program Committee. So we're going to talk about something that's really important today, serving the nation with people who have specialized expertise. The expertise is there, but the number is dwindling, and we have to figure out what to do about that. And so I just wanted to take a minute to think about who we are. This is a team with many, many utility players, many kinds of expertise. And I apologize to anybody whose group, affinity group, I've left off here. But who are we? I'm a radiation oncologist, so my team is up there. Radiology, radiation oncology, nuclear medicine, biology, epidemiology, late effects, radiation safety, health physics, medical physics, academic physics, power and energy, industry, space, defense, and the other hat I wear is preparedness and response. I'm sure there are groups that I left out. And more importantly, each one of these groups can be exploded into the individual subspecialties. We're a diverse group. We all have the same goal helping the country, and doing our job well. If you want to explode one of these categories, and it happens to be next year's category, radiation preparedness and response, there are lots of things that people do in the name of radiation protection in the preparedness and response. I'm sure we could have exploded the space category, the biology category, each one of these categories. So we have a lot of different players and we all need to play together in the same sandbox and pull the boat in the same direction. So there are a lot of things that we do in the preparedness and response arena related to mass casualty uh, medical response. And there's all sorts of expertise in this audience that isn't the medical response. But this is complicated and um, it's very important for the country, for the state and locals to have the expertise that they need to do what they need to do to protect the country and the individual localities. So where are the radiation professionals, all those people that I probably incompletely listed there? This meeting is about considering the evidence. Where are we? Where aren't we? Where should we be? Do we have enough people to continue? The statement, I believe, is in your program. During the meeting, we can communicate with each other on Twitter. I'm suggesting a Twitter handle here, NCRP 2016, but I guess you could make up your own. You can write your questions down on the cards, put them in the baskets. They'll be collected, and the session managers will uh, present the questions to the speakers. And after the meeting, it's important to do something. It's not important to just sit here and listen and say, oh, yeah, we have a problem. We need to fix the problem. And we suggest that you be energized by the meeting and go out and do things that will help recruit new people to the field that you care about and serve the country in a more efficient way. So it's my great pleasure to reintroduce to you somebody we all know and love, our fearless leader, Dr. John Boyce. The program, as Judy so uh, nicely articulated, is uh, dis you know, meeting the needs of the nation in terms of uh, human capital, the radiation professionals. And uh, we've got a lot of good people, we just don't have enough. And so the purpose of this annual meeting is not just to reiterate the problem, which we've been talking about for over 20 years, but to see if we can come up with any uh, viable solutions to, uh, to address the issues of the dwindling, dwindling numbers of uh, radiation professionals. So with Judy and Kathy Pryor and Rick, uh, Dick Tui, they put together uh, this program uh, that will be uh, 
experiencing the next day and a half, and then we list the uh, members of the <coughs> program uh, committee. So I wanted just to uh, mention that each year, it, um, it, the, um, <coughs> the annual meeting, we've learned uh, with new experiences, and as Randy Heyer mentioned last night, those that you were, uh, that attended the annual meeting, uh, annual dinner meeting, the world is changing and we need to change and have different approaches uh, to life and our professional experiences. And, and one of the things, we're changing gradually, even the, the format and the context of the annual meeting. And uh, one of the new innovations, and I think it's just very, very appropriate for a national council, is to begin each meeting with the color guard and the singing of the national anthem. And we learn that from our colleagues at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, who do this every year at their so-called RIC conference, the uh, Regulators Information Conference. The other thing that we find really important is, and if you would all please do this, is write questions uh, during the presentations, and we will have them, you know, addressed in an efficient manner. But they have the cards in front of you, and then we're going to pu we publish the questions and the answers, you know, in health physics. So it's a wonderful exchange. So to, for us to uh, to be able to capture the the essence of the, the concerns or the uh, recommendations from the council and those attending. The other item there too, it's not on the list, but if in fact you have an innovation about well, this is great, you need to contact Congress, you need to reinforce a university support for prof you know, professionals or people in your area, emergency response, medical oncology. If you write down those ideas too, not even as a question, but just write them, it says you didn't think about this, and so that we can then assimilate and try to move forward with the continuation of this effort. This is an ongoing NCRP effort. We have a council committee too on meeting the needs of the nation and this is not just a one-off. We've done a statement. We're going to continue. Uh, in the program we've also felt it was very important that we put in, you know, so that you know who the speakers are. So we have pictures and uh, brief bios so that during or after you can meet with them uh, and have and discuss issues. Um, one of the things, too, we felt it's good to recognize those that have contributed so much to radiation protection. And we've um, instituted just uh, last, uh, the last year uh, medals, just as an, uh, as an honor, recognizing the, the uh, Sinclair Lecture and the Taylor Lecture. We're continuing, you know, with that. We're also hoping to get the publications of the proceedings out in an effective manner. It's our goal, we've narrowed it down. We now have the publication prior to the next annual meeting, but it'd be wonderful to get it in the same calendar year. We already have, I think, two or three papers have been submitted, so I want to encourage all the speakers, if in fact at the earliest time, you know, they signed a pledge saying they would bring their manuscript with them, this has been going on for 50 years and hardly anyone is ever able to do that, but we would really love to have the proceedings out so this information can get distributed and useful to the, the world community. Uh, we do publish in Health Physics News, though, a, a brief summary that uh, does a synopsis of everything, and, uh, and that's uh, wonderful that we get uh, these summaries out in a rapid way. Uh, one of the things, too, is that we, we publish for the first time the annual dinner uh, presentation. Last year it was former N NRC Commissioner Allison McFarland, and she talked about radiation protection in the post Fukushima era. And that's in this uh, 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 this year's publication of the proceedings. It was a new innovation, and we're going to be doing the same uh, this year with Randy Heyer, who spoke about um, effective communications and how you can get uh, your point of view across in uh, today's world. The other thing too is we've been very, in our annual meeting, we've had a whole day with our PACs, our program area committees, and uh, they meet uh, for the morning and the afternoon we present uh, collectively what we're doing as the NCRP. And for the first time this year we published so that you all out there, if you want to know, gee, what is the medical committee of NCRP doing, you can get a snapshot. It's in our February uh, issue of, uh, of Health Physics Society, so we're publishing that and we'll probably continue. We, can, we try to improve all these meetings. There are things, uh, we have a brief survey, it's less than five minutes. It's one of those, did you like it, you didn't like it, and, if you, and what would you recommend to improve? So in fact, we do look at this very carefully and, uh, and then try to make improvements just you know, for the process of the annual meeting. 
But again, and then the last thing is that please contact me for ways uh, to improve, just not just the annual meeting, but uh, NCRP in general on how we can be more effective as uh, providing guys advice for the nation with regard to all things public health. We also have this partnership with the Radiation Research Society, which is going to go on to its, I believe, its fifth year, where we have young scholars, often assistant professors, postdocs, trying to get them interested in uh, protection aspects, you know, of the radiation professionals to encourage them to remain in the field. And we have three now where the Radiation Research Society provides travel grants so they can come and attend uh, the meeting. So if you see these uh, 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 young scholars, it, please uh, greet them and, uh, and encourage them. It's Dan Jay from, from Poland and um, Xiaowen Hu from, from Houston and then Chris Lee from Taipei. So we actually have an international uh, group um, with us. That includes Houston, of course. That's it.